Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Bertucci DX3 Field Watch. Um, first off, though, I want to thank my buddy Josh over at the Journey Wind Junk blog for sending this along. Um, he did a review of it, great review, and uh, I'm doing a review of it, and uh, I appreciate him sending this uh, my way. I wouldn't have gotten a chance otherwise. Next thing, let's do a little bit of a size comparison. First off, against some pretty well-known budget sorts of watch options. Uh, here it is against the Casio F108 and the F91W, which is over here. Both of these are very low-end sorts of quartz movements, although both with some serious performance. Here it is against the Citizen BM8180, which is another field watch military sort of theme uh, watch, but with a, a bunch more going on. And here it is against another military theme sort of watch. This is the Breitling Aerospace. Not quite a field watch, but uh, and slightly more expensive by a order of magnitude, but still, there you go. And then finally, let's do some measurements here, because these kinds of things are useful to know. Uh, right here we have um, the overall width of the case. And by the way, note that the, uh, the, the the crown being down here makes crown width inclusive measurements a little weird, but it's about 40 millimeters. The face of the watch itself comes closer to 31 millimeters here. The uh, lug width here, if you want to put your own uh, NATO strap on there, it's a 22 millimeter lug width here. And then the lug to lug distance appears to be about 48. So it's not huge, but actually the, the lugs are kind of wide. So uh, there you go. Size-wise, that's what's going on here. So let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your little Bertucci DX3 here. It's on the good side. First off, I do love the use of the off-center crown here. The uh, crown, although it's not generally an issue for me, having the crown prominent on the side here can actually be a slight ergonomic issue. It can be a problem in that it can jab into your, to your hand as you're wearing the watch there, and that's, that's not something I'm particularly in love with. And so having it down there is uh, makes the watch look a little smaller, makes it wear a little smaller. It's a beautiful thing. Next thing. This guy is actually very legible. I mean, if you look at this guy, you, you cross your eyes, you can still read it. You can read it without glasses on, even if you don't wear glasses. Um, it's, it's kind of a nice thing. I'm a big fan of the legibility on this guy, and there's a lot to be said for uh, white hands on a matte black dial. Yeah, there's a bunch of crap on the dial, but by and large, you can pick up the, uh, the, the, the hands pretty straightforwardly. Next thing. This is a quartz watch, as you can see here by the second hand going tickety-tick-tick-tick along. Um, this means a number of different things. It is durable. It is accurate. It is anti-magnetic. You have a reserve, a power reserve of, you know, someplace between two and four years, depending on the battery and whatnot. And it also means you'll get accuracy. And this watch is plenty accurate for a quartz watch. I mean, my testing, it's run about 0.1 seconds per day fast. So, you know, no problem there. Um, th so that's, that's great. Uh, this is going to be slightly more accurate than your average Rolex. So, hey, performance, no problem there. Um, and so uh, all of that is good. I think quartz watches really are the better choice for most people, and this is indeed pack and a quartz movement, so that's great. Next thing, this is a very, very durable watch, um, and that's kind of how they sell this. That is the marketing point for this watch, because the case on this guy is some sort of a resin fiber plastic thing, um, and it's it's durable. Um, it, it looks like it's metal, but it really it, it isn't, but it feels very stiff. Um, it, it, there's no, like, flex or anything to it, and it's also lightweight, and generally lightweight watches, I don't know, I, I find that the bigger, heavier watches tend to hit harder on things, so that's nice. Um, it has a mineral crystal in there, and so that's nice not going to shatter by and large. Sapphire takes scratches less readily, but it does uh, shatter more easily, so the mineral crystal's durable. The crystal itself is actually recessed. I'll see if I can kind of show this off to you, but th th there's a little bit of a rim up around the crystal on this guy, as opposed to on watches like this here, the BM8180, where the crystal is perfectly flush, or in some cases, the, uh, the, the crystal is actually above the watch, sticking up above, and that's always a little scary to me, and so that recessed crystal is not a bad thing strap on this guy is super strong, super thick. This is like a watch strap that you could jump out of a plane holding onto and you'd probably still be okay, assuming that it's attached to, you know, the plane. Otherwise, you'd just fall into your death with a watch strap in your hand, and you're not doing any good for anyone. Anyway, I digress. But uh, anyways, the, the strap on this guy is very strong, and uh, it, it's not going to, uh, to, to to break necessarily. And the, uh, the the bars on this guy, as you can see here, the bars are actually integral to the watch case. It's got this the, these crossbars here are just the same kind of resin that are going on there. And there are two of them, and this strap goes through both, which means that these are unlikely to break, and they're much less likely to come loose than, say, a spring bar on a watch, because that's always a point of failure on a watch, but the thing is, even if one of these does somehow break, 
the watch is still attached to your wrist by virtue of the other one. That's the nice thing. Even if it comes off on this side, the watch is still going to be on your wrist fundamentally, so you're unlikely to lose your watch no matter what goes on. And so that's nice. And show you the case back here. Good Lord, could you write anything else on it there? Um, so anyways, that's, uh, th that's nice. The durability on this guy is absolutely going to be there. No problem at all. And finally, um, the design on this guy does have a certain appeal. I'll say that. Um, you know, it's got a very field watchy aesthetic, a very no frills, almost militaristic thing going on. It's not necessarily the taste I'm after, but then again, I have fancy a taste. Let's be real here. But it does have an appeal. And there were lots of people, I post this on Instagram, like, oh, that's an attractive watch. And if that's your aesthetic, then great. You may love it. And that may be actually the most compelling thing about this watch for a lot of folks. Um, so that, to me, is the good, is that it's got the, uh, the design that definitely has an appeal for some. It's very, very durable. It is quartz. It's pretty legible, and it has the off-center crown, which I like. Um, to me, what's great, though, about this watch is the lightweightness of it. Um, I will see if I can put this onto my scale, uh, well, properly folded. Yeah. Oh. Let's see if I did right. Yeah, we're good. Um, 1.61 ounces on this guy. That's really, really impressive. Um, the fact that you're using this fiber case uh, is a fiber reinforced nylon thing. Uh, actually, I don't know that it's nylon. It's just about a plastic or another. But whatever it is, um, it means that this watch is exceptionally lightweight. It's lighter than say an equivalent. Ah, come on now, an equivalent uh, metal case sort of watch. Really? Okay, citizen. I'm the human. I'll win here. Don't fight me. There we go. 1.68. And then, you know, uh, up against some of your metal bracelet watches, which are coming in closer to four, five, six ounces, you, you're good to go. So I do very much like the lightweightness of it. And even on this relatively thick and heavy strap, and by the way, the, 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 the watch case itself is, uh, I'd venture to say that the strap is about as heavy as the case is. The case here comes in at 0.78 ounces, which is pretty absurd. Um, and so that's that's actually great. Um, I'm a big fan of the lightweightness on this guy, and it, it just it makes it wear very very nicely on the hand. Um, with the size and everything, it's it's just it's well done there. So to me, that's what's great here is that it is oh my god lightweight because of the plastic case and because it's sized at a very reasonable size for a lot of people. So there you go. Um, let's talk about the bad. And the bad here, there were a couple of issues. First off, like I said, this is a mineral crystal on there. For the price point, I don't expect sapphire, but what you do want to realize is that although minimal crystal, minimal crystal, wow, guys, a mineral crystal is less likely to break and shatter outright, it is going to take scratches a lot more readily than sapphire. So if you're concerned about breakage, this is a good choice, but if you want something that will stay clear and un unscratched forever, sapphire is going to be the better choice, but you'll need to go to a more expensive watch. Next thing, this uh, has a super cheap feeling movement. So what I mean by that is that, this is, look, this is a very bargain basement sort of quartz movement, and you know what? It's quartz, so the movement's not that bad. It's still going to be accurate. It's still going to be fine, but you get things like, for instance, if we look at this, the hands aren't reliably pointing at the second markers at all, which is, well, just not good, and I'm throwing my glasses here, guys. Oy, oy, oy. It's been a long day already, and it's only 10 a.m. But anyways, um, the, the movement, the, 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 the markers aren't being pointed at by the second hands on a reliable basis. The only function that you get for setting the watch is you pull it out, the second hand stops, and you can move the hands around here. Um, there is nothing like an independent hour hand or anything like that, uh, which is something I tend to appreciate, especially in the, in the quartz world, because it's a lot easier to do there. I mean, this is basically as bare bones as it gets. I don't even know that there's an end-of-life indicator on this guy, meaning that there's some element of the movement that will ch uh, basically tell you you're running low on battery before you run out of battery. And that's something that's always a little bit scary, because that means that your watch could be working fine one minute and just dead the next and you don't see that coming. That's one advantage that a mechanical will always have. It'll always kind of work, um, even if you're uh, even if it needs service and whatnot. So this is a really cheap movement, and that, that's that's very, very clear. Japanese quartz is all they'll say about it. Next thing, no date window on this guy. Not a big deal, but it's it's a deal. And by the way, the, 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 the cheap movement, look, it's a cheap watch, so that, that kind of makes sense. I don't want to seem like I'm beating up on it for not being a freaking Breitling, but, um, you know, that, that, that's the story. But there's no date. There's no, only, tw uh, only 50 meter watch resistance. So I know what you're thinking, but 50 meters, that's deeper than anyone's going to go. 
And you know what? By and large, this watch is probably going to be fine. You can get tossed in the pool. You'll probably be okay, etc. But the thing is, as watches age, their water resistance goes down. And so a watch that will uh, that starts off, for instance, with 50 meters of water resistance is over time going to be less and less and less. I like for watches to have a little bit more of a margin. I'm a big fan of 100 meter. I think at that point, you can stop thinking about water altogether and uh, be okay. But eh, it's, not, it's not super great, especially for a watch whose claim to fame is just like bulletproof, durable, bombproof. Whatever. Next thing. The uh, watch on this guy is actually a little bit on the tall side, particularly with this big, thick uh, Zulu-style strap on the back of it here. Oh, I never measured that. Let's measure that real quick. With the strap on there, which I think is a fair way to measure this guy, we are coming in at about 12 millimeters, uh, 13 millimeters tall here. That's um, honestly not super compelling to me. It's it's a it's a heavy watch. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a tall watch, and especially because it's raised up off the wrist further by this strap, I uh, I don't know. I, I don't particularly love that. It felt a little taller than I feel like it needed to be. Um, and unfortunately, you can't get rid of the NATO-style strap because you can't remove the spring bars here, which is something to keep in mind. The integral lug bars mean that the only kind of strap that you can wear is some variety or another of a NATO strap. You could move to a thinner strap, like this little guy right here, but um, unfortunately, you can never, for instance, use a strap that loops around this side, loops around this side, uh, unless you, well, maybe there's something you can do there, but you, you can't just switch into a normal strap like this guy here that doesn't cover the back of the watch face. So, uh, back of the watch, that is. So, that that's not great. The integral lug bars do really reduce your ability to compensate for that th relative thickness there. And then finally, on the bad side, the, the strap on this guy doesn't do it for me. It is super, super thick. I mean, uh, seriously, if we compare this to your average NATO strap here, um, this is pretty, pretty thick. And unfortunately, it just doesn't wear all that well. Even if you kind of have it wrapped around, and especially for smaller wrists, you can see that there's an area where this strap just doesn't want to flex. Look, over time, I suspect it'll break in. It'll work a little bit better. But the watch just kind of wore awkwardly, with the strap wanting to balloon out to the sides like that, and it just, and it's strange, and it's also a very weird length. So I have relatively small wrists, about six and a half inch wrist, and the thing is, when I've got this guy on my wrist and fully adjusted, and I've got the strap put through the keeper, sorry guys, hard to do this on camera, especially when you're not a brilliant man. But anyways, if we slide the strap in there, you can see that it's got just enough of the strap hanging off the back that it's going to catch and snag on things, but not enough that you can, like a normal NATO strap, feed it back on through. And so, even that's the case with my relatively small wrists. It might be a little bit better sized for somebody with bigger wrists, but, you know, compared to your average NATO that gives you just a little bit more length and a little bit more flexibility... Oh. Hey, easier to show you that direction, isn't it? Um, that's, that, that's not something I'm in love with. So, uh, to me, all of that is the bad. Is The super thick strap is not compelling. Um, it's got the integral lug bars, which limits your options for replacing that strap. The uh, inside of the crystal is dirty. Did I mention that? I might have skipped that. But it actually, if you look at this guy in the sunlight, after you've cleaned the crystal beautifully on the outside, there is still gunk on the inside there. It looks like maybe some kind of this got hot and then something lifted off the dial and attached to the bottom. It's not a big deal, but... Come on, guys. Um, or they just didn't clean the inside of the crystal before they put it in. Whatever. But uh, so the inside of the crystal is dirty. It's pretty tall. 50 meter water resistance is not eh, great. Uh, it's a no-date thing. It's a super cheap quartz movement. And the uh, mineral crystal is less likely to shatter, but going to take some scratches, 100%. On the ugly side, first off, um, they have written on the bottom here, Swiss Super Luminous. Well, no, not so much. I'm going to charge this off screen with a, uh, a very powerful flashlight here. And then we'll put it back onto the camera here. And so what you can see is that the hands are glowing very well. And in fact, the hands are relatively well loomed. In my experience, the hands are pretty much readable all night long, uh, especially if you give them a charge right before bed. But the, the indices... Those are just barely loomed. I mean, you can barely see them immediately after charging. They will basically not be loomed after a little while here, which means that yeah, you're going to be able to read the, the, the hand position overnight. You'll be able to tell the difference between, say, midnight and 5 a.m., but I like loomed indices, or at least some loomed indices. This is just not great. Um, and, and so you can call this luminous, sure, but it's not super luminous. I know they're talking about super luminova, but this is Swiss Bailey luminous. And it just feels underdone, honestly. You're not doing that much in this watch. You might as well do the loom right. Um, and, and that gets to the point, uh, the final point here on the ugly, which is the price. 
As I was wearing this guy, I made the point, as I often do, of not learning the price point until I have nearly finished the review, such that I can kind of come up with my own understanding of what this watch is going to cost. And uh, in my, my testing period, a common refrain for me was, oh, this had better be really cheap. Um, I was picturing this guy coming in at like 30 bucks, maybe 35 or something along those lines, because it is a very bare bones movement, plastic case. Not much going on here. Um, unfortunately, the the actual price on this is sixty five bucks, and that no, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, and so that's the other ugly thing here is that the price is just way more than I feel like it it has any right to be, and so that's that's not very good. Um, so that's the ugly is that the price is very high and the indices are really poorly loomed, and frankly, the loom itself isn't all that impressive for somebody who says super luminous on the dial. Um, let's go to the final conclusion, which is that at some level this is a nice little durable watch. I mean, it's a legible field watchy sort of piece. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to destroy. It's it's no frills. And it does have a certain aesthetic to it. I'll, I'll give you that any day of the week. There is a group of people for whom this is going to be super appealing. And, you know, with good reason. It's not ugly. And so at that level, I can't really argue. But the thing is, it's also a watch that is devoid of any particular mastery to me. There's nothing about this watch that's, like, impressive, that's blowing me away. Maybe the weight, but... Okay, I guess. It's it's just, it's very bare bones. There's nothing that excels here. It's kind of doing as little as possible to be a saleable wristwatch. But the thing is, at some level, it's a bit pricey for that. I mean, this would be like a super compelling watch for 25 bucks or 30 bucks or something like that. But ultimately, for 65 bucks, I mean, that price makes sense only if I pop off the back here and find two 20s folded up in there for me. Um, I, I don't see it. And so, unfortunately, although this is a nice watch in a number of ways and certainly not unattractive to some aesthetics, the value just isn't there. Because, look, for 20 bucks more than this guy, 25 bucks, um, you would get a, a Citizen BM 8180. This is a solar-powered movement here. This is uh, got a day and a date indicator on it. Um, it's going to be uh, probably, uh, well, actually, it's going to be just about as accurate, being a baseline quartz movement. You can use any uh, any kind of uh, strap that you'd like, whether it's a NATO or otherwise. It's got that same kind of field watchy look, and the loom is just as good. And so, yeah, I'd recommend this guy pretty much every day and better water resistance. Maybe a little less durable and going to take scratches more readily, but it's still a great choice. Or for uh, the toy, you also, at the same price point as the Citizen, could get the G-Shock GWM 5610, which is also going to be crazy durable. It's also black plastic. But that gets atomic time signals, so you're always at the correct time no matter what. It's a solar charger again. It has a light-up face rather than the loom on this guy. I mean, that's another beautiful choice, and frankly, it's probably a watch I would prefer to get to somebody that was, you know, going to beat the crap out of it. And for 20 bucks less, you could get something like the Casio Duro, which is definitely a step down in, term of loom, uh, in terms of loom on the hands, but it's a full metal watch, and it's still pretty attractive. I mean, look, this would be a great watch at some level to hand to some random jackass who's going to need a watch, and you know is just going to be awful to it. Somebody walks up to you and says, hey, Nick, I need a watch. I destroy watches. Okay, here's your Batucci. That's fine. The thing is, at some level, I would rather pay the extra 20 bucks and hand them a really good G shirt or frankly, hand them a regular G-Shock for the same price or less. Or even better, I could just hand them a bucket full of Casio F-108s. This is a, a $12 watch which is about as impressive as this guy is. And I could just call it a day. Like, you destroy one of these, great. Grab another one out of the bucket, and you'd still probably come out ahead in terms of time. So ultimately, the, the Batucci here, I mean, there's a charm to it. There, there's something going on. But ultimately, it's going to be a great watch at the right price. But I just don't think this is the right price. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting, that I wasn't too far afield of when reviewing this watch, that you had a good time, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.